What's up, you guys? Josh Tongley here. Today, I want to talk about how to live in the end, which is one of Neville Goddard's most powerful teachings that will really help you refine your understanding of manifestation. Because once you understand how this actually works, then by the end of this, dude, you'll be straight up empowered knowing that everything's possible to those who believe. And you can learn more about this from Neville's 1968 lecture called Live in the End and his other various lectures. You see, the problem is that a lot of people don't realize the creative power of imagination. Because according to Neville, he says that man, or woman of course, is all imagination. Think about it. Is there anything in this world that wasn't first imagined? Right? Try naming one thing. In other words, all objective reality, he says, is solely produced through imagining. Like the clothes you're wearing or the chair you're sitting on, everything. So the question is, what are you imagining? Think about it for a moment. And now look around you. And maybe you're like, I don't know, Josh, I've done all that stuff, trying to imagine things that I want, but nothing seems to be happening. And yeah, I get it. You can imagine things, no doubt about it. But the main thing I want to ask you is this. Do you believe it? Do you believe in the reality of whatever it is you're imagining? That's what it all comes down to. Remember, as I mentioned in my last video, since consciousness is everything, it's always about moving into a particular state because it's our particular state of consciousness that'll determine the events we'll encounter, which is why there's a huge difference between thinking of your desire and thinking from it. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to just think about your desire, you guys. That ain't enough. Rather, you want to think from it, from the end. You see, the end, here's a game changer, is where you begin. Did you get that? The end is where you begin. That's the secret, folks. You don't want to wait for something to think and happen in your world to move from one to the other leading up to it. Nah, dude, you go straight to the end. You believe it in, as Neville likes to say, meaning you always imagine ahead of your evidence. You ask yourself, if you were to go to the end, what would it be like if it were true? Imagine what would you feel like if you were now the person you want to be? How would you see the world? How would your friends see you? What would they do? What would they say that would imply that what you're assuming is true? Here's an example Neville gives. Let's say you want to have a happy marriage. But then you say, well, there's no one that's eligible. Yo, I've got some good news for you. You ready? You don't got to know anyone, okay? You don't got to know anyone. And you're probably like, what? Look, all you got to do is, are you listening? Decide within yourself what you want. It's a decision you make. Now, think about it. What would you do if it were true? Would you wear a ring on the one finger that would imply that someone placed it there? If so, then wear it. Not a physical ring, but in your imagination. And then fall asleep feeling that what you're feeling is real. And don't say, but it's only my imagination as if it's not even real. Dude, of course it's your imagination. But Neville asks, what's real and what's imaginary? When in a spiritual sense, all existing things are imaginary. Folks, it's all stinking real. You know what I'm saying? Let me share with you a couple more examples that Neville gives where you can even do this for other people. Like what if you have a friend who's sick, who needs healing? What can you do? First off, here's what you don't do. You don't imagine how they're going to get better. You know what I'm saying? Like the process where you imagine them taking medicine or going to see the doctor or undergoing surgery or whatever. That's where a lot of people trip up. Instead, where do you go? You go to the end. That's how you'll start seeing results, you guys. You construct a scene that implies its fulfillment. So in your mind's eye, you say to the person who isn't feeling well, you know what? I've never seen you look better, dude. You don't got to say, dude. <laughs> and then you have them say to you, yeah, I've never felt better. That's confirmation for what you're saying. Or what if your friend needs a job? Once again, don't imagine them turning in their resume or getting interviewed or any of that stuff. Like I said, go straight to the end. Neville says to see your friend as gainfully employed. Don't make a big deal about it. You don't even have to tell them. Just see them gainfully employed and then watch what happens. And here are at least two possible outcomes that he mentions. Number one, they get fired. <laughs> and listen, they find a better job. Or number two, they get promoted in their current job. Either way, who knows exactly what's going to happen. But one thing Neville knows for sure is this, whether it's for you or for somebody else is that if you remain faithful to the assumption, you're going to be promoted towards the fulfillment of the state that you've dared to assume that's yours. All right, real talk. Now, there are some of you watching or listening right now who've waited far too long 
to do something for yourself. You know what I'm saying? You put other people's needs and other people's dreams before yours. But I'm asking you today, what do you want? Not what others think you should want. No, what do you want? Don't let life pass you by. Okay, I'm serious. I'm talking about your dreams, your goals, your desires. Don't let them go unfulfilled anymore. You guys, stop doubting yourself. Remember who you are. Don't forget who you are. You are the operant power. You decide how your life's going to be. You don't need anyone's permission. Neville says you only need your own decision. Ask yourself, what do I want? What would it be like if it were true? Go to the end and then catch the mood. Try to give that mood all the sensory vividness of reality, all the tones of reality, and then sleep in it just as though it were true. Yo, I'm telling you, assume what you want to be. Even if you have no evidence to support it, or your senses deny it, or some people think you're crazy, who gives a rip? And then here's what's going to happen. He says a bridge of incidents will appear in your world, and you'll walk across a series of events leading up to the fulfillment of the imaginal state. And if it takes a thousand people to aid the birth of that state, he says, a thousand people will play their parts, so you don't got to go out and look for them. Because if you persist in your assumption, your wish fulfilled, the inevitable will happen. It will harden into fact, where you'll resurrect it and objectify it on the screen of space. And then the world will call it real because you get what you believe. Yeah. Alrighty, guys, if you enjoyed this, please do me a favor like and share this. Or if you're listening via podcast, I'd really appreciate a review. It gets more people to discover my work and, of course, help spread this message. And I'd love to hear your experiences in the comments below. And yo, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button and the bell right next to it to be notified of my next video. What are you waiting for? I pump these out every single week so you don't want to miss them. And don't forget to register for my free online training where I dive deeper into how you can start manifesting the life you really want right now. So check it out. The link's in the description. Like I always say, more's coming. Till next time, I'm out. Peace.